allergens! Hey everybody, welcome to Allergy Spite. But it tastes good! Good book! <laughs> yeah? <laughs> good book? We got it. <laughs> this is the cookbook that I... It took, what, three years to work on? Yeah. And, uh, super excited about it. It has map pages so you can write on them. Um, there's lots of pictures in it. They're all colored pictures. And, okay, I have to say, the recipe I honestly make the most in here. Yeah? Which one's that? It would honestly have to be... Where is it? The pumpkin seed raisin buns. That's for your most used recipe? Yeah, except for I use it with almond flour. Okay. So, uh, that one I make just about every week or every... Every couple of weeks? A week and a half, not even two weeks. Yeah. Because it's for mom and then when the, if they eat together, it's for them together to eat with. Um, the last recipe we put in this book, I think, is the... Pumpkin, pumpkin seed. Yep. Yeah. That's the, the newest recipe. Coconut pumpkin waffles. And that one is like super, super cool. Yeah. Because you can make sandwiches out of them and stuff, and you can do. Yeah. Yeah. I had the whole book laid out, layered, left page, right page. This recipe has two pages. Some have one recipe, uh, one page on a recipe. Does that make sense? Yes. They have one recipe for two pages, one recipe for one page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And when I was doing the final looking over with this book, I realized that. You need a, another recipe for buns because the pumpkin seed buns is now on one page. Yeah, his counting was off. My counting was not way. off. It wasn't off. Off. It wasn't off. <laughs> what happened was we dropped it by one page for the pumpkin seed recipe. Off. So, yeah. So then he, after I was all done everything, he made me go and do it again. Yep. Two more recipes. Oh. We uh, ended up removing one recipe from this cookbook. Yeah. Because it failed the taste test. Yeah, we had a taste test party, like, what is it now, four years ago? <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, we said, whatever is the lowest one on the totem pole, whatever you guys rank the lowest, that's going out. So I don't even remember what it was anymore, but we kicked that one out. Yeah. But uh, then we had this big thing, what was it, tagging up balls? This huge conversation about tiger nut balls, yeah. and um, they ended up being renamed to tiger nut flats. Yeah, to just, make them more unique in the recipe book. And because the people we had over at the teeth testing couldn't stop giggling. Yeah, <laughs> they well, figured that was like why yeah. tiger nut. Tiger nut is a flower. Oh, it is. Tiger nut is a flower that isn't a nut. So if you have allergies to nuts, so there's no tiger can, nuts in it. There's no tiger nuts in it. So you could eat that if they, if you have an allergy to nuts. And the thing is, I wanted a recipe book that is really different, really diverse. Um, yeah. So that if okay, let's say you can have pecans, but you can't have cashews or something in here. Try it. Yeah. Chances are it'll still work out. Um, Let's say you don't have, like we use monk fruit sweetener throughout the whole thing. You don't like yeah. that. Okay, well then try using swerve. Swerve. Or try using honey. Or try using maple yeah. syrup. Or even sugar if that's where you're at and that's yeah. what you use. Try that. You might have to figure out your measurements, measurements for to it. To readjust then, it. And then just write it in here so yeah. that you have got, you know, you know what it is. Uh, this one's got honey. There are a couple that have honey. Yeah, back in the day when we actually used honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got some, like, uh, like there's a meat pickle in here. So you stick a pickle in the middle of a meatball. Yeah. It's like just different ideas um, because there is food you can't eat. You know, and with him being like cut down to pine nuts, pecans, and pumpkin seeds, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And from that, this all came. You know, we ended up making the pumpkin seed milk, and then the flour from the milk, and then the buns from the flour, and then on and on and on. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty cool. And then also, um, there's a, like a frozen pumpkin mint cake. That one was good. Pumpkin seed. 
that's something again that he needed like he was like well what can I have for dessert right yeah so that's how that came about feed me yeah basically that's how this cookbook came to light feed me <laughs> I'm hungry yeah. yeah I don't know what I can make because I don't know what I can eat but you're smart it's, yeah and then oh I've got these treasure filled cookies I've started making these again for dad yeah and they're really really neat I always found it was easier to make a freeze a fridge cookie than it yeah. is to make a baked cookie. baked cookie when you are doing it gluten free. And uh, this was like super. This one turned out really really cute. Like I've got actually some in here that are baked, and this one's really cute because you can keep changing your filling in the middle, right? You can put chocolate yeah. in it. For Dad, he just bought this lemon pie filling. It's not pie filling, it's jam or something. No, it's pie filling. In that jar? Oh, it's... Lemon jam. Mm. So then I put the lemon jam in the cookies. And, oh, he thought I just made him like a whipped cream cake kind of thing. A lemon yeah. cake, you know, you put a little bit of whipped cream or coconut cream on top of that. And then it's like it's a dwarf. mini cake. <laughs> <laughs> mini pie. So, and then there's daikon. Dad, Dad, that, you know, <laughs> I don't know if Dad trusts me really anymore, because I'm hmm. like, here, try this, and I'm like, give him a fork, right? And he's like, okay, and he opens up his mouth. I said, well, what's in it? No, no, you tell me first, and then I'll tell you what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like your puddings. Like, you have a chocolate daikon pudding. You have a cauliflower chocolate pudding. You have a banana. Banana cinnamon pudding. Cinnamon pudding. Really good. And hot. That's a mm -hmm. good hot yeah. pudding. And I think your puddings are probably the best part of the recipe book. Really? It shows your creativity more than the rest of the cookbook itself. Yeah, yeah. Because it really shows how bizarre you can change <laughs> making a root vegetable into a pudding. <laughs> <laughs> the thing with the daikon chocolate pudding, or chocolate daikon pudding, the thing about that recipe, which is really, really cool, is you squeeze and you salt and you squeeze out the juices from the daikon and the salt takes away the heat of the daikon but if you don't take all the heat away and, it, and it, it's fine if you don't like it's totally cool you mix yeah. it up you eat the pudding it tastes like you've got coconut in this because who thinks chocolate you, radish well see we've got chocolate covered radishes <laughs> See, we've got um, chocolate chips in it and pecans in it, so you're tasting something in it, but it's hiding it because you've got like the nuts and the pecans or whatever in it, right? Yeah. But if you leave it till the next day, sometimes the the heat from the daikon will come back, yeah. and you're eating and you're eating this chocolate pudding that's got this weird heat to it, and it's still really kind of cool. Yeah. So. Pushing creativity. Yeah. It's, and playing with replacement. Yeah. Playing with replacements. replacements. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you're living a life that we've been living for 13 years now. Yeah. You have to weave in and out and figure out where to go. Yeah. And don't always trust. Like, oh, I really don't trust store store like brand you know, companies. Yeah, and, and, and the boxed stuff too, right? Because it's got stuff in there. All of a sudden you're having a reaction. It's like, what did I eat? Yeah. You know, so you have to go back to the box. And then it's like, okay, I don't even know what that is. And some of those boxes don't yeah. even supply ingredients anymore. And some of the stuff they change, they can change and flip the script on the ingredients on there. And you can be allergic to something and it won't even be on that stupid box. Yeah. So, I mean, it is, if you've got like serious, serious allergies, it is so dangerous. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I wanted people to know that it is easy yeah. to, to, to make well, something, to cook something. The entire concept of your intro with the slide uh, images is all about replacing and shifting. Yeah. So you can shift it around here, shift it there, adjust this. That's yeah. what the intro is all about. A lot of times what I do when I'm remaking a recipe is I'll take it, I'll make it the way it is. Unless I'm bored, then I never make it the way it is. But Which is <laughs> most of the time, because I almost never get the same food twice. <laughs> but 
but I will make. It's I'll actually make impressive that you were able to make a <laughs> recipe book with consistent recipes. <laughs> but I'll make a recipe, and then I'll sit there and go, oh, you know what? This would be better if I do yeah. this, if I do that. And then by the time I've, I'm done making it the first time, it's I missed what it was originally like. <laughs> it's unrecognizable to what it was. And I really missed the original. <laughs> yes, I'm making him and Dad. Uh, what is it? It's a peanut butter cream pie or something. So I made it that way once. And I'm and never getting it never again. <laughs> That's not fun. That's <laughs> depressing. <laughs> oh, hey, you're saying other people's recipes are better than mine? No. <laughs> I would never say that. Uh, yeah. I like eating too much. much. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, I kind of blew out a mixer. Yeah. No. Wonder. Oh, food processor. Food processor. With no. this one, but this one is. Oh. Mango chocolate good. cookies? Yes. Yeah. The mangoes, the dried mangoes and the cookies is so nice. And you can drizzle it with a like a spoon or you can drizzle it with a piping bag. They are like you put them on the table and they'll be gone. Yeah. They are so good. So hope you enjoyed our walk through the cookbook. Yeah. And I got another one that I've started working on. I've already got a few few pictures and a few recipes lined up. I got quite a few recipes lined up. Uh, yeah. It's going to be carnivore. Yeah. It's going to be carnivore elevated. Yeah. And it is carnivore like you've never seen it. Yeah. Gluten-free, dairy-free. Oh, no. Nope. That's this one. <laughs> That's this one. This one's gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free. Egg That's this one. The next one is dairy, egg, and meat. meat. Yeah. And there's going to be recipes in there that you would blow your mind. And so, for carnivore, there is good, not going to be any steak. Yeah, I'm not frying steak. I'm not cooking. This is how you steak. cook a steak. Yeah, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be things like um, green cheese roll, meat flour, meat flour, um, a meat cookie. Um, your carnivore lasagna. Yeah, my carnivore lasagna, of course. My famous carnivore lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we're not stopping yet. We're gonna nope. keep on going. Check out Chance Hansen. Is it? Off? Yeah, off Chance Hansen on uh, YouTube, and you can find part one of this one. Yeah, and also we've got book twenty out. He's gonna be putting that up. Yeah. More of our children's books, and uh, we're just gonna keep on going as long as my body doesn't <laughs> give up. <laughs> so thanks awesome. for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.